Hello everyone, welcome back. Today uh, we're going to go through uh, mounting this primary arm scope on this aerial precision mount. Um, and this is really interesting because this is a, a lightweight mount. This thing weighs about four ounces um, compared to the, the typical mounts that I have for these, for my variable optics that usually weigh about eight ounces, right? So this is half the weight. Now this is also a 34 millimeter um, uh, ring setup, okay? So this is, this scope is not uh, 30 millimeters, it's 34 millimeters, which actually threw me off because I didn't realize that when I ordered it. So uh, I had to wait like an extra week in order to get um, the, you know, to get the scope mount. And uh, that's really, that's the reason why I ended up with the area of precision uh, because the, nor the regular ones that I typically get, um, you know, uh, are, are, are usually about $60. They're eight ounces. This one was, I think like eight, I think like $90, but it's half the weight. So um, I'm kind of glad that it worked out that way because it will give me a chance to uh, test this out. Now, this is a little bit different because you, in the past, the way it works is like you had the two halves that mount onto the bottom. Uh, this is set up so that the screws go attach at the bottom and you can see how the top, see how, see how that attaches over there? So that's a very interesting setup. I, I guess they did this to reduce the weight, um, you know, or and the design, right? Because probably not that much of a weight savings, but more of a design savings because you don't need to thread screws through the top half. So uh, really interesting. Now, I absolutely love the tool that they give you with this. Um, really handy it's got this first of all it's magnetic so it gr actually grabs the screws and the other thing you know it's a star key and it you know you can spin this real quick so this is an awesome design um, first of all let me show you the box so that's the aerial precision scope mount this is the 34 millimeter they also have there it is um they also have the um a 30 millimeter which i i've added to my cart over at optics planet I just want to test this out for a couple of days before I order a 30 millimeter version of this. So first let's get these screws out. So see how easy these things just come out when you get that little spinny handle thing. Now I did already go once through this installation and um, so I've, I've kind of been through it so I know kind of what to expect. So let this off, take these screws out. So you can see how they catch on. So yeah, they, this is magnetic. So that's really cool. That's a nice. See, I, I think that all, I think all tools should be magnetic like that. It makes working so much easier. Well, so that's the thing with the Allen keys. It's such a pain in the ass if you're trying to get them, get the screws out fast. But this is so easy. So love this tool that they give you. The Troy X. You guys are probably seeing this backwards because I have it in selfie mode because um, I wanted to get the close zoom in. So, yeah, you can see how the two halves go like this. So, the scope that we're mounting is the uh, Primary Arms SLX 1 to 10 by 28 second focal plane. Okay, and I'm going to do a full review on this. It's got this really cool vertical. Um, so for a second focal plane scope, you've got a lot of information there. You've got a mill grid. Um, you've got the ability to, uh, you know, um, range somebody based on their height. A lot of good stuff in here. So I look forward to testing out this scope and reviewing it. So as far as mounting this, okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our level to make sure that we are level. And it just so happens that this table as it sits here is pretty level it it favors slightly left just just a tiny bit to the left like like it's so tiny where if i take a little piece of plastic right and i put it underneath it here it it it, it doesn't balance it the throw it actually throws it off actually what the other side so it's so slight the balance is off by so little yeah see now it just it moved too too much so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to put anything underneath it. I'm just going to 
keep it like this and just know that it it favors just ever so slightly a hair to the left okay so let's put, all right so we're going to be aware of that all right so let's put this on okay and what i want to do is i'm going to I'm gonna go right about there and first i'm gonna first let's do this before we even do now i really like I said i already went through this once so i already got some loctite on these on these screws uh, i'm using this stuff the vibra tile this is great um this it, this is way more economical than buying the little loctite tubes um th this is this is a much better way to go i'll clean the table later you buy this big bottle and like you're set for well, probably your life so given the amount of shooting that i do and the amount of guns that i have it's I'll probably get a couple of years out of it <laughs> But for most of you guys, you, you, you will probably be set for life. All right, so that's pretty good. You need a whole lot. All right, and basically what I do is I squeeze this in to suck suck the thing back down. That's good. Top off. There you go. There. Okay, great. So let's put you on there. So this, it, it, initially, I, when I first took this out of the box, I'm like, these rings look a little bit smaller. Is it even going to fit this? But, yeah, when you place them in, they actually stretch a little bit. So it, it works out just fine. It, it, see how it, it almost, when, when you press it in, see how it, it stays in place? So, I mean, we get, you know, so they, they stretch a little bit, and they, and they lock into place like that. So let's take this now. So that's going to go like that. Yeah. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. This is a comp. Well, actually, this scope is not that compact. I was thinking of the other one. So I want to try and bring this. There you go. Right there. That's good. That should be good there. Get you on there. All right, let's drop the screws in. Now, this is just going to be just so that we can initially get this position and then we'll level it off. So, give this a fast twist. Get this kind of in there so we can work with it. Keep it right there. Put the front one on. Drop you in there. Drop you in there. So, this cool with this design, you only have four screws as opposed to my other mounts where I typically have eight screws. Two in the front, two in the back. Okay, so that we don't want to make it tight. We just want to just get this thing positioned, basically. Okay, so let's put it there for now. Looking at the Loctite here. It's on the table, so it's going to start drying. Okay, good. All right, so we already know that the scope is fairly level here. Or rather, the scope mount is fairly level. And we know that we're going to be favoring the left just a little bit. Um, all right. So here's the thing that I found. I found this out earlier. Because of the way that this tightens up from the bottom, right? As you tighten this up over here, it shifts the scope over that way a little bit. So what you gotta do initially with this, right? Since since when you tighten this, it's gonna it's gonna bring the scope down that way. Um, we have to take that into into account. Otherwise, we're gonna be working back and forth against ourselves here. So let's see how that works. So I've got my bubble touching the black line on this side because from what I saw earlier, when I tighten it, it's just gonna pull it in and it'll center it. There you go. There you go. Bubble's moving. Yeah, there you go. Here, I'll undo that and show it to you guys again. So as I loosen this up, the bubble moves again. Yeah. Actually, I'm not going to try to move this because I take my word for it. <laughs> that I went too far. All right, now I got to reduce. I got to because that time it set it. So again, so 
turn this a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to try to get fancy with the camera. I'm just showing you guys because I should have left it the way it was. Okay, so, so what I'm doing is I'm rotating it. Actually, let me see if I can put the guys down a little bit. Put you straight down. Let's see, you're able to see it. Okay, there you go. There you go. Okay, so you can see the bubble there, right? So right now it is touching the black line. So now as I turn my screws, okay, that bubble is going to start moving towards the center. There you go, see it? It's moving to the center. So the key is you want to start, see now, let's see where I was. Eh. Remember, I said I want to favor the left a little bit, but now I think I'm a little too far. So what that means is when I undo this, I got to come... On the right side, I gotta touch the bubble. I gotta touch the black line a little bit more. I gotta get a little bit deeper. Okay, this time I went a little deeper. Uh, bubble's a little bit more to the right this time. So this time, let's see when I start turning the screws. See how the bubble moves. Uh, it looks like it's favoring. Let me turn the rest of the screws. See what happens. It's not exact. Because remember, I need to favor left just a hair. Let's see if I turn the rest of the screws, if it's going to pull it. The front ones. I'm going to loosen this up a little bit. From what I saw earlier, if I loosen it up and tighten it up, it pulls a little harder to the left. So I'm just going to loosen up a little bit and tighten it up. See if it pulls it. There it goes. It's favoring left now. Okay, so, yeah, just by loosening up a little bit, just the way this thing tightens up. Okay, I got the back one set now. So you want to just, you don't want to crank down so hard with this that, pull this back up so you guys can see. Okay, so you don't, you don't need to crank down so hard on this that you strip the screws. Now, the other thing that you want to do with this when you tighten up the screws, right, tighten them up, right, then back them out. Tighten them up, back them out. Do that with all of them because what you're doing is, you know, these basically you're breaking in the screws. You're getting the, the threads on the screws versus the, the the threading and the holes to to mate with each other. They'll, they'll tell you the same same thing like if you're mounting a barrel onto like a into an AR upper, you know, you have to do it like three times. Like put it in, back it off, put it in, back it off. So what I'm doing is I'm forcing the threads to break in. This way they don't like loosen up over time, even though I got the Loctite on them. Back up. Okay. Now they tell you I think it's like 15 pounds of torque. I've, I've never actually used the torque thing. I just I just finger tighten it, you know. Like I don't like I'm not gonna put my whole hand on this and crank it. I just finger tighten it like that. Let's see, it's getting fun there. Yeah, perfect. Centered, favoring slightly left, which matches up to the table. Great. So this is set. Now, now the other thing I want to show you guys, I'm going to bring you a little further over here. Um, this is my the upper that this is going to go on. So this is a an 18 inch uh, upper 223 Wild from Palmetto State Armory. Let me back you guys up just a little bit. So this is my first 223. So uh, 223 Wild. Everything else has always been like a, 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 a 556 five, barrel. Um, so here's the thing. What, what, the way I'm going to mount this, right? I want to match up the back of the glass, not to the charging handle, but basically to the 
this little U over here in the receiver, right? I have found that that usually gives me the best eye relief. Now, of course, I, you know, I'm gonna have to test this out, um, but that's you. That's where I have found that these variable scopes um, come in. That's that's usually where I gotta mount them. If I if I bring it further back, then I see shadow. So it's gotta be far enough forward. That's why they make these things so that you can, you know, the way that they have this extended forward design. So. So we're not just mounting actually, we're going to try and we're going to also break this in. I'm going to show you guys how I do that. All right, so now I have put this where I expect it to, expect it to. Now I'm not going to tighten the screws up. What I'm doing is I'm playing this thing back and forth. So if there's any like little pieces of metal stuff, you know, basically I'm just getting these two pieces to mate. Now on some scopes, there'll be a lot, a lot more play. On this, there's hardly any play. And I, I think the reason for that is because of the way they designed it. They got like three of these, there's three of these teeth to catch in three different positions. So there's really little play on this. So let's go back to the spot where I'm mounting. So if you got a, yeah, there's hardly any play. If this, if there was more play on this, th this would have been even more important because there's not that much play on this. This is really academic. I'm just doing this uh, more to for demonstration purposes. But I'm also by doing this, I'm learning that there's very little play on this particular mount. So uh, really good on this mount. All right, so let's do this now. Let's get this off. Um, let's get the screws out. I'm gonna put a little bit of lock tight on the screws. There. Do them all at once. There's no spring or anything there. If there was like a spring or something over here, I would I would lock tight them one at a time. Okay, good. So let's do the same thing we did before. Line up these three screws. A little bit locked tight on this. Normally, I'd be a little bit more careful about not getting locked tight on my table, but right now I'm doing this one handed the camera so we have to clean the table up afterwards okay so uh, i love these I love this magnet I think they put the magnet there just to facilitate doing this one-handed. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really, really helpful. There, drop you in. This is an excellent tool that Aerial Precision provides us with. All right, let's take off the table. I have to do some water later. Okay, so let's not leave that on there. So again, we are. Okay. So I'm. Oops, stop. Mm, that's before that spot. All right, so that's the spot right there. So yeah, if it kind of comes in, you're gonna want to favor like slightly forward. I mean, I have just found that that um, that gives you the best eye relief so that you don't see shadow. Yeah, there's there's no there's no movement here. There's no wiggle. So there's really this this breaking is almost academic. But yeah, you definitely want to apply pressure towards the front because that's where this thing is gonna want to move on the recoil. Just tighten it up. 
the screws up and then we'll just give it another push this forward because again that's where this is going to want to move on the recoil so we're going to help it get there okay, tighten it up okay and we're going to do the same thing we're going to loosen it up tighten it up 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 Hoping the threads break in. And, and this is something that you want to do, like even with your red dots, you know, when you mount it. Loosen it up, tighten it up. Just be careful not to over, you know, careful not to strip it. Okay, so let's jump in here. Do the final squeeze. Again, just using your fingers here. Okay, there you go. And this thing is ready to be zeroed. That's how that looks. So again, that's the Aerial Precision 34 millimeter mount. Um, with on top with the, the scoping the. Uh, of primary arms uh, S10. Uh, it's something that just recently came out. It's an, a, a, um, the only place I saw it actually available was on primary arms website. They had it listed. They did. They did have it listed. Um, scope. They did have it listed at Optics Planet, but it, it hasn't been available. So I went to. With the primary arms, um, the one thing that I mean, I think they did kind of rush this a little bit to market because the literature was like completely was, was off. Um, it, they did say in the literature that this had auto live, which is like basically auto off, auto on, um, you know, on, on, on the reticle, and that's not the case. And I'll be sure to mention that when I do the uh, so this does not have auto on, auto off in the reticle, despite what they said in the literature, and I confirmed that with primary arms. Uh, twice okay so i'm absolutely sure of that um and then there was a couple of other things that were a little you know, coming up short in the instructions that i'll talk about when i do the review on this scope but uh, that's, that looks pretty good time to go outside and zero this sucker in thanks for watching guys i'll talk to you soon